Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we now have Tim on twice a week, at least, unless there's breaking news on any day. He also has a live stream channel. He's going to be having that up, back up soon because he has this amazing blog every day, Europe Business with one S dot blogspot.com. And uh, Tim, we have a full hour this time. We're going to be a half an hour this Thursday. You've got a lot of news to cover. Let's start with the top in terms of what's going on with China and Vietnam. What's the latest in terms of the Russian nuclear test? I mean, things are are just kind of chugging along, well, heading toward yeah, uh, Russia, WW3. Uh, for the second time in uh, about two or three weeks has launched a ICBM. Uh, it's kind of a, hello, wake up call. Uh, we're serious. Uh, you're pushing this kind of hard. Uh, remember, we got a lot of these, and we can uh, fry every city in the West. Um their, their primary ICBM is Land Mobile, and it's moved on these giant armored uh, vehicles that uh, they don't need roads. They're very tough. Uh, I forget. They've got like 18 wheels or something. And uh, they're, since we don't know exactly where they're at at any one given time, a surprise attack uh, would find it very difficult to take them out, including an attack from space. But uh, they can put 10 to 12 uh, MERV warheads, that is 10 to 12 thermonuclear warheads, on each missile. And, um, you know, it's, All it's probably, we megatons. probably should pay attention. I mean, you know, it's one thing when uh, uh, Gaddafi, when you're going to go in and uh, kick Gaddafi's butt, or... Uh, uh, Assad's butt in Syria or uh, uh, Iraq, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's another thing when you take on the Russians when they've got that kind of technology. And yes, our, and, and we have way, a lot of like technology the beyond want... theirs, but you know what? They can still kill us all. Yeah, now here, the thing is, the Russians don't want to use it. Now, if it was in the hands of Muslims, they would use it. But the Russians will use it if push comes to shove if they don't get treated number one treated with respect number two they keep on getting shunned and abused by the west and number three the west starts to try to get tough with them and actually use weapon systems against the russians like staging our uh, special forces that are in europe to attack inside the russian border if they do that all bets are off and the russians will go crazy yeah the russians are um I had a Russian girlfriend for a while after my wife died. Absolutely one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and I've been in Russia, and, uh, out, and I have Russian friends. And I want to tell you, even more than Americans, the Russians are very, very patriotic. And, and if you, you know, uh, they're not the kind of people you really want to uh, box in the corner. You, uh, you just don't want to do that. And it's... Yeah. It it's reflective of the criminal insanity, the demonic insanity at the top of the now very very corrupted uh, American administration, American Congress, and so forth. That, we don't really uh, have an American president here. Place. We don't have an executive or a legislative branch anymore. We have proxies for globalism. Yeah, they're all bought and paid for, with only a handful of exceptions in Congress. Right. And, right. and everyone is afraid to get uh, outside of the narrow box they have to stay in because they know they'll be defeated uh, either in the general election or in their own primary, and that the forces that are controlling things will dump untold millions into those races to defeat them. Well, uh, even even uh, people that I have some positive things about them, like Rand, Ron, Rand Paul, Rand Paul supports Israel no matter what, putting his little yarmulke on and doing all the other stuff. Not good, Rand. Okay, the fact is, Israel is a danger to us. Here's my Israel's advice to you. a tiny, hyper racist country. I mean, it's. it's right. well, why we need to do is why we need all to... this attention on Israel? Why not on right. Wales? Why not on Luxembourg? Right. Right. Why not what on, do you, uh, you know, uh, Paraguay? Or, or uh, The point is that uh, the Zionist movement makes sure that untold millions of dollars are available uh, in right. the United and States and Congress, and it, and in the British Parliament, in the German uh, Reichstag, in, in the French Parliament. Parliament and so forth 
to buy everybody off. And right. we shouldn't tolerate that. And, I'll, and I have said this many times, it's actually not good for the Jews. It's not good for Israel uh, because it, it, it denudes them of people who aren't their enemies who could normally stand up and say, you know, you guys are really screwing up here. But nobody, everybody's afraid to say anything. Well, it's not the majority. It's not the the majority of the Jewish people. It's a tiny little hyper racist clique that isn't even Jewish. Uh, They're number one. It's all all tied to the global banking cartel, which most of them are Jewish. But you know what? That's that's a facade too, because that's just a uh, that's a way to get the 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 Jewish masses uh, to to support them. In reality, what they're all about is power and money, Uh, and I'm referring specifically to the Rothschilds, Warburg, Schiffs, Goldman Sachs, uh, uh, Rockefellers, and so forth. These people have been at this game for a very long time. They're very evil. Uh, Many are absolutely, totally satanic. Uh, and they're they're, dry, they're leading us to a place that's that's insane. Uh, now, w- when you get this uh, this gas thing, which uh, in the Ukraine was the Ukraine now is saying that they're not going to pay in advance for the June natural gas deliveries. Well, that becomes a real problem for Europe because Europe gets at least thirty percent of its natural gas, mostly in Germany, and uh, the gas runs through the Ukraine. So the Ukrainians can uh, uh, siphon it off. Right. And uh, so what's Russia going to do? You know, and, and again, the, the, the globalists want a war so bad they can taste it because they've set us up for this economic collapse so they can get their new currency. Their new currency, their new world order currency, their mark of the beast, uh, which will be an electronic currency. And they don't want it blamed on them, the true culprits. They want it blamed on Russia or China or somebody else. So that's why you've got to have a war, even uh, even if it's not yeah, I don't think it'll be a, a, but I don't think it'll be a full-blown war. I think it'll be what I call a war with a hiccup, in other words, a period of false peace. Uh, a true war, if it, was, it would last like so many hours and everybody's dead. What I think will happen is that the threat of war will be so great with, this, with the initial flash of destruction and death, uh, whether it's in Ukraine or in Syria or Iran, that the uh, Russian response will basically force everybody to come to the table and say, no matter what the terms are, we agree to it because we don't want to die in a World War III. But that's going to be a temporary peace, as it says, in the middle of that seven or seven year period, the peace will be broken. And they're going to, they were setting up Russia to be the beast dictator. Uh, Russia, by the way, there's, both sides aren't good, okay? We know the Europeans are bringing, trying to bring about an orange revolution. We also know that there are Russian collaborators that were there that were, how can I say it, making the, the, the crazy Kiev terrorists look even worse. Uh, and of course, falling right into the hands of Russia. Russia doesn't even need to do anything. They didn't need, don't need to send troops. They just need to sit there and look good and smile. Putin could just smile for the next six months. The more death and destruction that happens, as he says in this article you have posted up, that Putin says terror has been unleashed against the civilians in Ukraine. He does not need to do anything. Yes, there are maybe some uh, uh, some elements within even the uh, so-called revolutionary government. They're doing the, the most stupid things imaginable, shooting civilians and killing other people. They're guaranteeing that the, most of the country is going to fall into the hands of, of Putin. And I think once push comes to shove, the West and NATO are going to do nothing. The reason is, if they do anything, the European economy is going to go completely cardiac arrest, blue code. That well, America, yeah. America will have put itself in such a position because it's spread itself so thin now that we will have basically we're having exhaustion because so many of our military and our troops have had so many deployments in Iraq and Afghanistan. We've used them all up. They're. Physically and emotionally, yeah, I, I, I have I have talked to guys at uh, the college where I teach it have come back, and I mean, you know, the stories you hear out. are just amazing. They're burnt out. They, they, we, it's unreasonable. The likes of these wars, the war in Afghanistan is longer than any other war in American history. It's ridiculous. Welcome back, and uh, yeah, we're trying to discern through uh, what, what I see here, this kind of maze of 
constant manipulation. See, I made the statement last week on the rents program, and I'm going to say it again, that Putin's a player. Uh, the Sabbatean Satanistic bankers in Russia, they get along with Russia, with, with Putin, they're okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, you know, Kordakov and these other characters, Kordakovsky, anybody that didn't go along with the Russian elite and with Putin, uh, they got slammed or put in prison. But the Russians are going to demand their pound of flesh, like Shylock and the Merchant of Venice. And uh, the Chinese are kind of really saber-rattling now, too, in the South China Sea, saying that, hey, we want this territory. They got this, this zone for flying zone in the area. Um, there's a big dispute now with the Philippines and trying to set up uh, uh, more and more bases there to try to see if they can kind of muscle their way into the South China Sea and get all the oil and gas there. Um, I, you know, there's new bases yeah, in America. It, it, we, it, it, it's the, the Obama administration's pivot to Asia. Uh, we've got Abe, uh, the prime minister in Japan, who uh, is kind of like a wild pit bull on a short leash. Well, uh, I, I think the Chinese are vastly, even though they have this giant population, they should not underestimate Japan. No, Japan. I, I would say Japan is not only a nuclear power, but is one of the probably three or four largest nuclear powers on Earth. Right, not only that, their uh, naval power. Have you ever seen that? nuclear weaponry yeah. uh, exceeds that of China, of the U.K., of France, and is only behind the United States and Russia and maybe Israel. Uh, Japan has this enormous stockpile of, uh, of plutonium, and... Uh, you know, she can rapidly assemble and launch. She's got the launch vehicles. She's got the aircraft. Uh, those, those warheads, they can snap on in an hour. Okay, so yeah, the exactly. Japanese, the Chinese, basically, they don't really remember the raping of Nanking. They're still ticked off of the Japanese. The Japanese have had to be militaristic because in that area of the world, there's all kinds of invasions going back and forth with China for millennia. What is likely to happen is is China is trying to build up this giant military force, and they're just starting to build carriers. They don't have a blue water navy. They have a starting nuclear force, which isn't fully operational yet. They're building on contract Russian-designed and engineered jet aircraft, and that's why they gave 18 JL-17s to the Pakistanis as a gift. Uh, was it 50 or something, or 52, I think, last year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, so and, and which is, it's a good airplane. It's uh, their design. But they also built the Zhukov family of, uh, of fighters under contract uh, uh, from Russia. Um, and they, you know, they have a, a lot of stuff. They have more engineers now and more people studying engineers they than all they can't the project, They can't project, they but, cannot project power, though, around I, the world. I know. It's not possible. I, I the and the Chinese don't have any doing that. They yeah. remind me, to draw an analogy, they remind me of the Japanese in the 1930s. Uh, very full of themselves, uh, getting increasingly militaristic, thinking that they're, they're, you know, they're, they're really tough. And uh, what that led China, to, or what that led Japan to do, was not only invade China to seize some land, but uh, when Roosevelt wanted to uh, prod them into getting a world war going, so he could go rescue uh, Russia and uh, the the UK from the Nazis, uh, they they willingly went along, and they got themselves into the greatest nightmare of Japanese history. And I think the the Chinese are are going down that road. Uh, I, I haven't been to China, but I know so many people have, and I know people from there. And when you look at the pictures of some of their cities, particularly in southern China, it's almost like something out of the old uh, TV show, The Jetsons. I mean, everything is is postmodern. It's, it's these giant skyscrapers and yeah, they, you know, they, everything. It's just dripping in money. Well, yeah. they've been the, the uh, beneficiary the of the greatest mass transference of human wealth in human history uh, because we use their population base, the globalists use their population base to build everything. All the junk that we buy, all the clothes that we buy, almost everything right. comes from China. But right. but increasingly that's being outsourced to places like India and Malaysia. Well, right now they have built uh, over hundreds of thousands. Tim, they built hundreds of thousands of warehouses to stick the stuff they can't sell to us anymore. And they can't turn off their factories until they have a revolution. So right now, they're not only switching power, because they can only rock some factories three or four days a week, 
and they can't fire people because it's a it's a communist state. You know, there's this iron bowl policy of terms of, of food supply. They can't turn off the factories, so they're just storing stuff in warehouses. China is ready to blow up, and uh, it's likely to have a revolution very soon. And and all this militaristic activity is just the 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 fear and the agitation activity of the people's republican army that have you know airstream jets and their kids go to the university of spoiled children in california and they go shopping to london when there's fancy shopping you see the chinese flying in like crazy these young people that are the children of the pla communist billionaires the nicest uh, rolls royce limousine I, I ever saw in uh, in london wasn't the queen's it was the chinese ambassadors uh, which it just happened to go right past me, and I said, "Wow, is that impressive?" And uh, yeah, they they are dripping in money, and the, it's the People's well, Liberation they, they, Army. Their their generals are the uh, are not the only billionaires, but certainly high among eight, eight, all the billionaires of the uh, new, in China. Eighty percent of the new billionaires, eighty percent on the entire planet in the last twenty five years, are Chinese People's Republican Army communist. Top Sotheby's members. just had a big art auction, and most of the stuff was bought by telephone uh, from uh, the Nuva Rich billionaires bidding uh, from Beijing and various other places from, in China. From Shanghai. Yeah, and, and, they, and I was watching on uh, Host Hunter International just the other night. They had a show, and they uh, were had oil engineer people who were going to go to work from America, I think from Houston, and were going to central China, I think it's Shandong. And the city is like 14 million people. And they, where he's actually working is the largest building on the planet that was built recently, opened here in the last six months or so in China. So, I mean, the, the, the building well, is bigger like, than the Pentagon, huh? Bigger than any other building on the planet by a large margin. <laughs> yeah, a friend of mine just uh, moved to China. He's an executive, and, uh, uh, you know, he's making a lot of money for being there for uh, about a year or so, but. Uh, I I wouldn't want to go there. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, a, it's a very bizarre culture. Uh, I'll give you an example of some of the negative sides. They get twenty thousand Laodai prison camps. If you uh, they tolerate the people that are host Christians, but if you evangelize, you go to prison and you get tissue typed. If your eyes or kidneys or heart are required, they they pull them out of your body, charge the family after they kill you for the cost of the bullet. Your organs are removed in a little van right beside the uh, jet liner that's going to take your organs that are in cryo to the specific hospital system anywhere, whether it's in Europe or Emory University in Atlanta, where they tried to recruit me to work with the Atlanta Emory people to procure our organs and put them through the trauma unit in the Augusta Regional Trauma Center. So uh, these bunch of criminals are global. Uh, organ procurement is right along with drug trade, and people don't understand. They think well, the, the Israelis are at least number two in that bracket, by the way. But uh, well, yeah, they're, very, uh, they're near the top of, uh, how can I say, procurement and uh, assessing access and uh, mobilization. How's that? And so much space. Yeah, the, the Israelis are uh, pretty bad, isn't it? So jump yeah, off the Russians, too. Not a good plan on the part of Russia, of, of China. Um, we were talking about the dialogue between China and Russia, and China is doing all kinds of things to tick off even their allies like Russia by not only buying technology, military technology, but then trying to copy it and compete with the Russians. Uh, it's not. It's not a really healthy relationship. Let's put it that well, way. Well, yeah, it, it, it's gone through several phases. First, uh, the Russians were were uh, kind of traditional suppliers to to China, but uh, once China really had big bucks to spend, uh, Russia was anxious to sell just about anything to them. And what Russia found was they were selling planes and and all kind of systems. And uh, within a couple of years, they were seeing a Chinese copy on the international arms market competing against their own product at a, at a lower price. So right. they raised hell with the Chinese about that. And uh, the Chinese, uh, you know, kissed and made up and agreed, well, we're not going to do this and so forth. And lo and behold, they did. So now you, you when they, they're, 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 they're quite prepared to sell, uh, but they structure any deal so that if the Chinese cheat, it uh, it doesn't hurt Russia uh, because they expect them to cheat. Or are they structured from word one where China is deeply involved and there's a, a, a technology transfer? And 
then uh, you know the money has to be put in in uh, a third party's account and so forth because they don't trust him. Now the the U.S. ambassador was summoned uh, to the Chinese foreign ministry today, uh, and uh, they were complaining uh, and vowing retaliation against the United States over the spy uh, cyber spying charges that. Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a bit nervy, isn't it? But. The reality is well, yeah. 3Com, which is we, a phone we, system. We, we in... have criminal charges now against several of the top Chinese generals. Well, here, here's the uh, facts, though. I, I just fill in because I know about 3Com. You know, 3Com, they don't have a wired phone system in China. It's all wireless, cell phones, etc. And the main company that came in there was an American company called 3Com. Uh, just like every every phone system on the planet and every continent is monitored by the no such agency, NSA. So the Chinese have a valid point when they talk about cyber spying, but the Chinese do industrial espionage to the tune that in Canada it's estimated $200 billion a year. The Chinese are espionaging just the Canadians, and it's 10 to 20 times that size in America. These guys well, and, have, in and China... And there's been a new twist to it, too. Yeah, this the is, this is different. The Chinese are buying up whole companies. And, for instance, they bought the Cirrus aircraft. Now, a, a buddy of mine uh, owns a Cirrus aircraft. It's a small, single-engine plane. It's all composite. It's not aluminum. Uh, it's lighter than aluminum, stronger than steel. It has a ballistic parachute. It has a what's called a glass cockpit. It's, it's the best thing out there for a four-seat little plane. And I, I recommended it to him. He had a twin prop jet, and uh, it was breaking him up. And I recommended it to him. He loves it. But... Now, the whole company has been bought up by China, and it's one of the leading-edge uh, light airplane manufacturers in the world. And so they're coming in and buying up that technology. Well, well what goes with that like... technology is, is all-composite whole airframe technology, which is something I've been involved well, in, uh, well, was 30 years ago. The, the most advanced kind of uh, uh, light rail transit system, high-speed rail, is Bombardier of Quebec, yep. Canada. And what happened yep. is Bombardier decided to make a deal about a decade or so ago with the Chinese. What the Chinese did was extremely unethical. Within a matter of years, they reverse engineered it, made the system go about 65 to 75 miles an hour faster, and said it was now Chinese technology, so they didn't have to pay anything to Bombardier. Put the screws to them and decided that, well, we're just high-speed rail our system with our own new upgraded version of Bombardier. So this is how the Chinese deal with anybody. Um, well, and, and what we did, what the Obama administration has done, we're laying criminal charges against several of their top generals, was probably long overdue and certainly justifiable. But what concerns me is is the timing of it, because when you look at the broad spectrum of what's happening in the world in the Crimea, uh, you know, eastern Ukraine, southern Ukraine, uh, right now there are is a very large a uh, couple of very large military exercises, one going on in Israel with U.S. troops, another one going on in Jordan with U.S. troops. Uh, there's a number of things going on, and of course the the whole issue, I mean, China within the last uh, week has sent uh, an enormous number of tanks, armored personnel carriers, and troops to the border of Vietnam. Uh, if you remember after the Vietnam War, China and Vietnam fought a, a border war for right. uh, about a week or so. Uh, it's over some largely worthless islands out in the, the, the South China Sea. There are a few that are claimed by Vietnam, a few are claimed by the Philippines, some are claimed by Japan. Now, it's said that there are uh, oil deposits in, in various places, but it's... Uh, we have deliberately stirred things up, and of course the Chinese are not I I responding very brilliantly. They've they've taken the bait hook, line, and sinker, and uh, they're they're really showing their butts now. Uh, it. it you know, we, it, this is one more massive step towards the Third World War. Now, I can't well, I, tell I think you here's what, here's what I think. that it's going to happen or anything like that, but I can yeah. tell you we're going down a path that is the path of global destruction for the. Well, human what race. I think is happening, Tim, is this: that uh, the globalists have realized the trajectory is in ten years we won't be able to handle the Chinese. Today, we can. Uh, the Chinese, if we start either a movement toward a new world financial order, we have to have a dominant position. Ten years from now, we won't. So I think what they want to do is they want to start a regional large enough war 
they can smack down the Chinese and say, you're going to do it our way in terms of the globalist cashless society system and the mark of the beast, which is coming from America. And uh, they want the Chinese to be contained and controlled. And unless well, the Chinese remember, let the China central... China is a key member. It's the second uh, most important member after Russia to the BRICS. Russia, China, Brazil, South Africa. And there are now about 80 countries that, to, to varying degrees, are interested in, in cooperating with the BRICS. And this is a direct challenge to the Rothschild-headed global banking cartels, uh, central banking system. And few things will cause a war quicker than messing with their gold, with their power, and uh, you know, uh, Libya but, 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 wanted to set Tim, up a gold Tim, dinar, got him killed. Uh, yeah. But Tim, the total amount of money that's dispensed within these 80 countries uh, in the BRICS is teeny compared to the amount of money that is denominated in U.S. Federal Reserve notes. And as a result, they're delusional, the Chinese, thinking that they can print enough yuan or the renminbi currency system to kind of well, you know, super uh, uh, and by, by, was, uh, was delusional. So was uh, Saddam. He wanted to. Well, uh, so here's he what's was, happening in China. They decided to do the same policy as the Fed Reserve. They have now hyperinflated at 16 to 18 percent per, per month now, and their inflation is killing their country. Right now, over 50 percent or more, it's more, uh, of pr basically is loan shark business loans in China, and the pro and the providers and the and the, the people who have got these loans can't pay them. So their country is ready to blow up, and the communist Chinese are trying to save Rattle to kind of distract the population from, away from the fact that they have built up this giant machine to build stuff to sell to Americans and Europeans and South Americans and elsewhere Canadians. And because they're ticking off their customers and the transnational corporations, which are globalists, are saying, hey, we can get English-speaking workers at a half or quarter of the cost, uh, a quarter of the cost usually in India, we can move to Indonesia, we can move it to the Philippines, whatever. We don't need to deal with you pesky Chinese. And guess what? The Chinese are actually having revolts where they actually will take U.S. Uh, corporate leaders and actually uh, arrest them or try to detain them in the factory so they can't even leave. So yeah, the Chinese exactly. basically, you're, you're, you're exactly so right. The Chinese, the Chinese are basically at what I call a terminal phase where they, they bought this, this, the hook, lock, and sinker of uh, Richard M. Nixon when he went to China, to Beijing. They have this racial superiority complex idea. Yes, they're intelligent, but in terms of social graces of international finance and politics, they're morons, and they're going to get themselves killed. Well, not they're just to call the world country. country, and and <clears throat> now they're loaded with bucks, which means they're new for rich. Right, but the fact is that they don't understand how things work. You can't exactly. just go and have a BRICS nation. Who are they going to sell their stuff to if they can't interact with our currency? They have no customers. They're crazy. Which means they're a day away from collapse. Exactly. Welcome back. And uh, why is this all important? Well, you'll see in the, in a second here. Um, you know, let's go through more of this analysis uh, because I think people should start to realize that there's going to be a major correction in the economy. I think the next weapon of mass destruction is just devaluation of the Federal Reserve note. If that happens, much of the so-called debt, which is about $1.73 trillion the Chinese have, and it's not the total, the total amount of indebtedness is something like $64 trillion. So the Chinese have a tiny fragment of it, and it's been used as an excuse to allow things like this Bundy Ranch disaster, uh, or the Chinese buying up farms like the big pig farms across America, and now they're also importing, exporting into America chicken. Do you really want to eat chicken made in China? I don't think so. No. When I when I pick something up at the grocery store, I read on the back, and if it says uh, anything comes from China, it goes back on the shelf. I don't trust right, anything. Right. And, and here's what's going to happen. Uh, I think you're going to see a backlash. The transnational corporations don't want to deal with China. They know that when they deal with a corporation, for example, Boeing Aerospace was approached many times by China. What the Chinese want is within five years the transfer of all intellectual property on all Boeing Aerospace, which means in about 10 years' time, you won't have Boeing Aerospace in Seattle making aircraft. It'll all be China, just like our power control systems for our step-down transformers. This is not a way to run a world. This is a crazy idea, and it puts China in danger, and it puts us in danger. And the fact is the Chinese just want to have... They want to learn how to be a society. They've gone through well, the wall. And, and, of, and maybe <clears throat> even more importantly, in terms of, of, of how dangerous it becomes, it <clears throat> puts the uh, those oligarchic forces in the West 
uh, mostly centered on the global banking cartel, it puts a lot of their operations in danger because you've got these Chinese that want to be play at their level, and they don't like competition. Well, 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 listen, we always have a one-up on whatever the Chinese are going to do. I talked to one of my uh, colleagues, I guess I was taking care of him as an employee at uh, Storage Tech, which is north of Denver. And it's one of the major storage device systems for phone systems, et cetera. Storage tech is a whole bunch of, uh, you know, large, you know, you know, zeta bytes of memory storage, okay? <clears throat> this guy was a nuclear uh, scientific and, and communication engineer from Bielorussia. And he said, you know, we always afraid of America because we knew that even when you're giving us nuclear technology materials, that you had bigger, better weapons in, in the back, in the warehouse. <laughs> and the fact is, we do, okay? So... Uh, these countries that are playing this kind of game, they don't realize the British and the Americans and the Europeans have been playing this game for millennia. The Chinese haven't. They are mentally retarded in terms of their ability to understand just how evil the globalist bankers are and how many cards they have hidden up their sleeve to pull out and really blow the heck out of China. China is basically playing ball with people that are very nasty, and <clears throat> they just don't grasp that. They just don't grasp it. They're just like, oh, we're all billionaires now. We're doing great. We can fly into London and go shopping. We can have our kids go to University of Southern California. We have our Airstream jet going to our private island. We're, we're making it, you know. Now we're going to become a big naval force, and we're going to bully the local people all in Asia. So the Asia conference is all freaked out by what's going on. They're even uh, not treating their allies like Russians correctly. They even want to steal their technology. <clears throat> Do you know how many Canadian and other companies will ever do business with China when they hear what happened with Bombardier and these other countries. Eventually the Chinese are going to become a pariah. And what's happening well, that's is... that's kind of <clears throat> what happened with Japan in the 30s. <clears throat> right, and I see the same thing happening now. That's why much of the transnational corporations are saying, hey, we don't need to deal with you guys in China. We're moving the factory to Kerala, India. We're moving it to the Philippines or Indonesia. But <clears throat> which then is a, you have a situation <clears throat> in China where you have all these generals and, and communist party leaders on top. And you know, what a weird situation. It's a communist country, but all the leaders are, are capitalist billionaires. But anyway. <laughs> that, that, that's weird, isn't it? Is that weird or yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so they're sitting on top, and they see their little empire saying, uh-oh. Uh oh, uh, what are we going to do when we don't? Uh, well, we have to start closing factories. Well, we've got uh, one billion, uh, about four hundred million people, and they all have to be fed every day. And uh, they expect uh, they have these expectations of things getting better. Uh, what's going to happen when uh, half of them are out of work? Well, they're well, going to come here's after a, us here's with the the, 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 uh, the the Chinese have. Highly educated people. They graduate more engineers in Beijing than all the PhDs and engineers in every specialty in scientific studies in America. In the world. Every, in, yeah, just in America. Yeah. So what happens is they get all these highly educated people. So for every job that they create, they have nine to ten people who can't get work. These giant cities they built, nobody can afford departments. They even offered some of these cities to the China, to the Japanese and say. If you want it, we'll give it to you at an enormous cost. <clears throat> the Japanese, you know what they did? Said, heck with that. We got a deal. We can buy a couple hundred thousand square miles of Kerala, India, and we have a nicer climate. We have people that speak English. We can even move our factories down there. We don't need to deal with dealing with the Chinese because they know the Chinese. Are they, they call them the Jews of the Far East because they're not easy to deal with. They're always ready to see how they can put the screws to you. That's just the way it is. Yeah, and the Japanese, I, I had a professor, uh, uh, a Chinese professor, that that's exactly what he said. Right. Uh, so so what, what, what's going to happen is that the Chinese will eventually find that their business relationships around the world are going to collapse. No matter how much money they pour into you know, Tanzania to make hospitals and rail lines and everything, or how much land they buy leases up in Australia to grow food, eventually it's going to dry up and people say... It says China on it. I ain't buying it. I don't care what it, what it is. I'm not going to buy well, it. Well, and and they see this this <clears throat> uh, earth changing uh, event coming. The the global collapse of the dollar. 
uh, assuming that's how it, it goes down. But the the well, that, that's the all by design, by the way. One, that's by design. One this world is... currency, and it will probably be be based on the dollar. But that's not the point. Well, uh, yeah, but here's here's the fact. There's going to be a, 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 a real a nasty period. And well, it's actually going to be good. In China it's, are it's, looking at this, and it scares Jim, the hell out of them. In World War II, they actually tried to devalue the dollar because it was good for American business. If the dollar, if we are internally kind of trading with ourselves and buying food and making food and so on, number one, we'll start making more of our own food and our own goods right here because the factories will say, to heck with this. All these pension funds are invested in factories that are moving to India and Kerala. They'll say, well, the cost of energy in America now is the number one energy producer in the world because we're going to soon get rid of Obama and his attempts to block you know, the coal-fired generators and the XL pipeline and everything else. We're the number one oil and gas producer on the planet right now. We're not number two or three. We're number one. And that means, basically, once we get rid of these moron, democratic, uh, communist uh, Satanists, <clears throat> and they're pretty bad. I mean, the, the Republicans are bad because they're stupid, and they, you know, they can take, they, I call it the Pyrrhic victory. They can, they can steal defeat from the arms of, of, of victory. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> The Republicans are. They, we have two parties: the stupid party and the evil party. The stupid party are the Republicans. The evil party are the Democrats. Uh, both of them are dysfunctional, but they need to get their act together. <clears throat> That's why we have Keisha Rogers, who's a breath of fresh air, trying to impeach Obama as her main platform, and the the Texas Republican Party are freaking out by her trying to well, do this. There's two two things that this country absolutely has to do <clears throat> if if the American citizens are ever going to have a voice. One. Uh, the Federal Reserve has got to be killed. Uh, at least no, 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 I, no, I, I'm not talking about killing it. I can tell you what they need to do to it. Well, I know, but uh, uh, you, you, can't, you can't, can't kill it. It can't be owned by the people that own it now. No, what you do is, you, here's what you do. You write off all the debt, you seize it and take it over by the Treasury Department, you allow every single state to have a state-run bank and have credit so they can actually have like... There's Hamilton only one prices. and it works beautifully, North Dakota. Right, and you have, by law, you have America print as much money and credit as it needs in order to balance its economy with the, with infrastructure, etc. You don't Growing loan population. the Federal Reserve, you don't loan the U.S. Treasury notes to every damn country on the planet, which was being going, going on with the Federal Reserve, so we're putting everybody in debt to the Federal Reserve, which is supposedly our money system. You get the so-called board, which includes the Queen of the Netherlands, who's with her beehive hairdo, and all these other... European. Well, she she, uh, she uh, abdicated her son's uh, uh, King Alexander. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, name. it's a it's a European uh, moneyed you know city of London uh, you know tyrannical exactly. system that's running the whole damn world. Global and, banking and, and, cartel. Right, and of course, you know, you and I both have Scottish heritage as well. The Scots have been under the the boot of the of the British and the Europeans a long time. Uh, even the British were smart enough not to let them being sucked totally into the European Union, which is why they have kept a pound sterling. They're not stupid. Yeah. And I, well. I think that what, what's going to come out of this is that uh, <clears throat> if it's done properly, we'll take over the Fed Reserve. We'll write off the debt and just say it's gone because you're never going to pay it. And no, but we, uh, it, that is almost a revolution. Uh, and yeah, we have to right, have also really countervailing act, because that's countervailing where the real tariffs. In this country lies. Counter, yeah, stop the industrial espionage. Put countervailing tariffs on China and these other countries. We don't have most favored nation status with these characters. They want to steal our technology. That could be fixed in one year. That could be fixed with the right policies. One.